this is one of the most scary charts in the world. And I think this is what the high yield credit market is, is, uh, is sniffing out here. So what we're showing here in the gray line is these uh, employee compensation as a percentage of GBA. That's just a proxy for labor costs as a, as a percentage of, um, of revenue. And then uh, corporate, oper uh, corporate profit margins um, as a percentage of GDP. So, you know, or a proxy for co uh, corporate profits as a percentage of GDP is a proxy for, for uh, profit margins. Yeah. And the compression of that line, you know, the speed with which that line compresses and, and the degree by which that line compresses um, remains a key risk to, to cash flow generation. And I think that's what the credit markets are sniffing out. You got some material headwinds to, to operating margins. You, know, you got China slowing to its nadir. You got the dollar go to slide 44. You know, the dollar um, accelerating on an annualized basis to its, its peak um, in Q1. You know, so you, uh, slide 44. Yeah, so we show slide 44. What we're showing here is the quarterly average of the trade weighted U.S. dollar index. You know, so back in 1Q18 and even into the second quarter 18, the dollar was down on a year-over-year basis. Uh, well, we're transitioning it to up almost 9% you know, on, on Q119, and, and it's going to be another, uh, uh, it's going to be a drag really all throughout the first half of this year. So, you know, everyone's saying, well, you know, the economy, you know, and I mean, I genuinely, I, when I say everyone, I'm, I'm saying sort of the financial media pundits and the, and the sell side sort of strategists and economists that I listen to on these podcasts and whatnot. You know, they're all saying, well, the economy hasn't really slowed. It's just, you know, things are still great. Earnings are great. You know, this is a crash from nowhere. You got to buy these things. Well, I don't know if the management teams are telling you that, but the, I don't know if the management teams are aware of their currency translation risk in the Q1. I don't think anyone else is doing that analysis. Um, I don't think FedEx did the analysis. You know, like, <laughs> clearly their management team is—I don't know what the hell they're doing all day. But you know, maybe, maybe if you ship things around the world, you might want to look at the U.S. dollar, the price of the U.S. dollar, and how it changes. Maybe that, that's a decent starting point. I think would be, be a decent starting point to to run a, a global in a multinational uh, shipping company. But you know, I, I digress. So the point is, is the outlook for corporate earnings remains really, really constrained, um, probably relative to consensus estimates. I mean, you know, it's hard to sort of have a now cast for you know all 500 companies in the in the spot or all 2,000 companies in the Russell 2,000 from an earnings perspective. But you know, if the market crashed, it probably means investors were a little bit too high on earnings for for 2019. Yep, um, and, and and the trend and volatility probably suggests that they they probably still are. Yeah, so and the multiples have yeah. reflected it, but the yeah, the earnings haven't actually come down yet. Exactly. So. See, see, I can get qualitative too. You know, I could say yeah. you know things probably aren't aren't priced in yet. You know, look at me. I'm I'm doing the qualitative thing. It's it's so nice. It feels good. We had it feels sexy. Yeah, you know, we did. You know, our presentation on on still being short retail a couple of weeks ago, basically uh -huh. saying the exact thing. Like, okay, the stocks have come back, but they're just that sort of a you know, maybe an average, if that's the right even sort of way to look at it, multiple, if you're using the real numbers, they're not at trough, if they're far from trough. Totally, totally. Uh, um, and I would argue, you know, the, the multiple, certainly historically, the market's multiple has tracked the rate of change in growth like a glove. Like, it, like you pull the chart back as far as you can go and you see when growth's accelerating, the multiple's expanding, and when growth's decelerating, the multiple's generally compressing. You know, in and around recessions, the multiple math gets tricky, obviously, because you have negative earnings. But, you know, but generally speaking, during economic expansions, the multiples follow. I mean, obviously, they lead because they're, they're forward-looking, but, you know, they follow the rate of change in growth. And if we have growth decelerating for the next 12 months, the multiples are probably going to be lower than they were in September. That's just the fact. It's a fact. So, like, you know, everyone's saying the market's rated, it's cheap, you got to buy. And this is another thing. I, this, is, this has been a be in my bonnet all quarter long. Everyone's saying this is a great buying opportunity. Where is all the money coming from? Aren't these the same damn people who had you fully invested at the damn top in September? Where is the money coming from? Every day is a great day to buy. It, it just I, it blows my mind. Were you you were your max gross market value in September as a hedge fund, or you're freaking you know you you long all this crap at the top in September as a, as a long only, and then you're telling me in December 26th or 27th or 28th that it's a freaking buying opportunity of a lifetime. Well, where'd you get all the damn money? Because you were already you just lost 20% of your damn your your, your fund. I, that, that's what I'm saying. Like it really it's really frustrating. These people like people are having redemptions. Obviously, fund flows continue to fund out of uh, out of uh, uh, actively managed funds into passive. You know all this stuff is it really chats my ass. We can do better as industry because I'm actually pissed off about it by this stuff. I want someone to get on one of these damn podcasts and say, hey, I screwed up. You know, I, I lost a lot of my clients' money, you know, being long quads one and quad two exposures in September, and we don't have any money to buy anything. I want you to flow some funds and trust me into my funds so that I can buy stuff because I don't have any damn cash because I just lost a lot of your damn money. I want somebody to say that. 